I have many tricks in my pocket. I have many things up my sleeve. But I'm the opposite of a stage magician. He gives you an illusion with the appearance of truth. I give you the truth with the pleasant disguise of an illusion. For starters, I turn back time. I reverse it to that quaint period, the 30s, where most of America was matriculating in the school for the blind. Their eyes had failed them, or they had failed their eyes. And so they're having their fingers pressed forcibly down against the fiery braille of a dissolving economy. In Spain, there was revolution. Here, there was only shouting and confusion. In Spain, there was Guernica. Here, there was only the disturbances of labor, sometimes pretty violent and the otherwise peaceful cities of Chicago, Cleveland, and St. Louis. This is the social background for the play. This is a memory play. Being a memory play is dimly lighted, not realistic. In a memory play, everything seems to happen to music, explains the fiddle and the wings. I'm the narrator of the play, and also a character in it. The other characters are my mother, Amanda, a sister Laura, and a gentleman caller who appears in the final scenes. He is the most realistic character of the play, being an emissary from the outside world that my family seems so far detached from. There's also a fifth character in the play, who doesn't appear except in his larger-than-life picture over the mantle. He was my father, who was a telephone man who fell in love with long distances. One night he skipped the light fantastic out of town, last we heard from him was a picture postcard from Mazatlan on the Pacific coast of Mexico, containing two words, hello, goodbye, and no address. I think the rest of the play will explain itself. It pains me very much to speak to you so frankly, Lady Bracknell, about your nephew, but I'm afraid I do not all approve of his moral character. This afternoon, while I was in London, on an important question of romance, he obtained admission to my house under the false pretense of being my brother. Under an assumed name, he drank. I have just been informed by my butler, a bottle of Perrier Joy Brew 89, wine I was especially reserving for myself. He then succeeded in alienating the affections of my only ward. He consequently stayed at tea, and devoured every single muffin. And what makes the deception all the worse is that he knew from the onset that I have no brother, that I haven't had a brother, nor do I intend on having a brother, not even of any kind. I specifically told him so myself yesterday afternoon.